So, do you want a good example about how much the quality of filmmaking has devolved over the years? A simple double feature. Jurassic Park, followed by Jurassic World. Okay, so we've come to the Jurassic World trilogy. A film I quite enjoyed in the theater, enjoyed the first several times watching it on video, and even though I still do like it, we got problems. This film, you know, it was a great nostalgia bait that got a lot of people into the theaters, and convinced a lot of people that the film is better than it really is. And I had to say, as far as, like, the new cast, which, like, only consists of, well, main cast, which only consists of Chris Pratt and Brace Dallas Howard, their characters don't hold a candle to the original cast. The writing in this movie is hit or miss. The humor, or would they pass for humor, is pretty cringy at times. And even how overly used CG is, is apparent in this movie. One of the first shots is of what you think is a dinosaur's foot, but then it's a bird. And, you know, Real bird, not hard to film, they're everywhere. CG bird. This film gave us a full-size animatronic Tyrannosaurus Rex that still looks good. This couldn't even give us a real bird. Yeah, it's... Like I said, that's how much filmmaking has digressed over the years that... They don't like to put anything practical on film anymore, even when it's something that could easily be put on film, like a bird! That being said, this movie is a pretty decent commentary on... You can kind of look at it as a decent commentary on the modern box office and spectacle, how they had to make a hybrid dinosaur because... Real dinosaurs just don't captivate the interest of the public anymore, and that they need this hybrid, and it is kind of a nice commentary on how, you know, movies just have to keep getting bigger and bigger and outdoing each other in... As many years ago as this film came out, when you look at it now that... Hollywood is really consuming itself by having to put these multi-multi-million dollar movies out again and again and not always getting enough for the return. Like, the small budget movie just... They don't see it as profitable because they need to keep topping themselves. They need more spectacle. They think audiences are going to be bored with the smaller in it, they've really created a monster of their own, much like the Indominus Rex in this film. So, yeah, even though I do have my problems with this film, I'm still just a little more on the side of liking it, and I appreciate, after Jurassic Park 3, a film that kind of has something to say again. But... <clears throat> You know, it's, again, it's interesting. Like I said, it's kind of a quintessential modern movie in a lot of ways, but it also has a criticism of modern movies. We do, I don't know, in the film, it even kind of, it's kind of a callback to the book slash first movie because there's two kids whose parents are getting a divorce and one of the mothers is played by Judy Greer. I do not like Judy Greer. 
She was beyond annoying in Halloween 2018, while although she was more tolerable in Halloween Kills, I didn't shed any tears when Michael got to dispose of her character. But, you know, it's kind of, they do kind of have a weird, it is a weird family dynamic with this because you also have their aunt who's a major player at the park and you could, she's so work focused, she's not making time for her nephews there, she doesn't even remember how old they were the last time they she seen them. And it's not that this stuff is bad, but it just, it isn't done, at least touched up on well enough that it's just more a matter of fact than making it more of a plot point that this woman doesn't even make time for her family. Like, you don't really see any evidence of character growth in that department other than her trying to save them, which did feel natural, and in the next two films, like, her nephews aren't even mentioned, so it's like, what's going on there? Like, they, I didn't expect them to come back in future films, but at least pay lip service to the characters, but that's not this film's problem. Chris Pratt is okay at best adds the lead. The Velociraptor squad is a huge fan favorite. Their popularity speaks for themselves, although stuff you see in this film contradicts what they'll show in the next film, but I'll get there. My biggest complaint with this film is that we get dinosaurs let loose on an island filled with tourists, and we really don't do much with that concept. There's only one scene where the larger population of the island as a whole is actually in danger, and that is a huge missed opportunity. They could have done so much more with this. The Indominus Rex was a fascinating concept, part Tyrannosaur, part Velociraptor, other things. It's so smart, it tricks them into letting it out of its cage. And although from that point on, it's kind of a generic monster on the loose, which great concept that doesn't need to be anything more than it is. They just don't do enough with it. He kills a team sent to recapture him. He runs through an, the aviary, which makes a helicopter crash. And <coughs> I will address this since I'm here. The new guy who's the owner of the park, he claimed John Hammond, that this John Hammond's deathbed wish for him to make it a reality. The same John Hammond who in the Lost World Jurassic Park, which at this point the canonicity was kind of floating, was or wasn't it, but by the Lost World it's confirmed to be canon. At the end of, I mean not the Lost World, by the end of Dominion, Lost World is confirmed to be canon. And at the end of The Lost World, this is the same John Hammond that said, these creatures need our absence to survive. That must, and he looked like he wasn't long to live at the end of The Lost World, so that must have been a real quick turnaround. Like, although I did like the park owner character, he kind of rides the fence between being indifferent and not, but he does kind of go out a hero piloting a helicopter with a gun trying to kill the Indominus Rex, so, you know, good on him. It was a nice, he was actually a nice, fun character and a good inclusion, and I, <laughs> I was hoping he'd make it to the end, but he didn't. Now, eventually we get the Velociraptors turn loose on the island, and, you know, there are some, like, scenes, like, 
it's like clear they really didn't know what they were talking about at points. Like when Chris Pratt's telling one of the kids Blue's the beta and he's the alpha. No, no, it's not technically Blue. It, Blue is the alpha. She's the alpha of the pack. If you want to go by that logic, you would technically be the alpha male, but she would still be the alpha female. So really didn't know what they were talking about there. We do get some great raptor on the loose stuff after the... This is after the aviary breaks open and the tourists get attacked, which, again, it was just one scene of the majority of the island being in danger. There was this woman who gets a horrible death. She was work for the park and she was kind of appointed just to follow... Claire's nephews around. She gets grabbed by a pteranodon, dropped in the water, lifted out. The mosasaur eats both of them. And, you know, again, to show just how pathetically soft people have become, I remember complaints about the movie being sexist because of this character who wasn't a bad person dying in that way. It's just a movie, and it adds to the horror. It's not really horror unless people who are good or not bad are put in danger and put out. Get over yourself. It's just a movie. If you're going to be that offended by everyone, I got an easy solution for you. Come on, look at the camera. This will make it easier. Become a shut-in. Cut off contact to the internet. Hide from the outside world as much as possible. <laughs> Problem solved. But anyway, the raptor attack is nice. We get to the island and the raptors at one point, they turn on the Indominus Rex who quickly kills three of them. And they let the Tyrannosaur out, and this scene has been laughed at and memed to death, so I'm not going to talk about running from the T-Rex in high heels. But we get the T-Rex fighting the Indominus Rex, and then this scene, the whole theater did erupt in cheer when Blue, the lone surviving raptor, teamed up with the T-Rex to fight the Indominus Rex. That was a... Great scene, and this finale was phenomenal. I got what we wanted, because at this point, I had even given up hope on seeing the T-Rex. And not only do we get to see the T-Rex, but we get to see the T-Rex fight the Indominus Rex, who, with a Velociraptor tag team partner, so like, 60s Godzilla level fun here, and they get... Eventually, they back the Indominus Rex to the edge of the water tank, and it gets eaten by by the Mosasaur. So, you know, fun stuff. This movie, again, despite the fact that its flaws started showing more and more, I still have fun. That being said, there are segments in this movie where I'm just bored and checking my phone like one of the characters in the movies because the pl the pacing is just completely all over the place with this movie. Again, like I said, perfect example of how much filmmaking has degraded over the years. Just how expertly paced this movie is, how awkwardly placed this movie is, how the subtle humor in this movie works how the crin humor in this movie is more awkward and cringe. The, I gotta say, the scene, and I know I'm talking about the plot out of order, but the scene where they come across the old visitor center is nice. Although there's, after over 20 years, the night vision goggles shouldn't have worked, and there's no way they should have gotten one of those Jeeps to crank but it was kind of again that scene was just again it was nostalgia is an incredible drug 
and not in in the bad way. And that scene was just there to pull on the nostalgia strings. But for what it was, it worked. It was nice to revisit that location, although you'd think it would have been completely demolished. But mm, that's just what it is. So Jurassic World is a watchable film. Not the best, but not the worst. And it's down, steeply downhill from here. So don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. I will be back with the film that to this day I still don't know how, I still don't have any strong feelings one way or the other about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Oh! <laughs>